Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Gavinsky's Tutorials. Today I'm looking at the new update for piano motifs. So I actually did a video on piano motifs before. Um, I think it must have been about two months ago now, one month ago, can't remember. Um, if you haven't seen that, I'd strongly recommend it. It's got a whole bunch of tips and tricks in it. Um, things that won't be covered in this video. Um, but what it doesn't have is information about MIDI out, because that's what's new in the update. So before, when you wanted to get MIDI out of piano motifs, you just had to do MIDI export, which is nowhere near as convenient. You know, you had to export the MIDI file, open it up in some other app like Cubasis, or in the last video I used Photon, for example. Um, now you can just send the MIDI out directly to different hosts in real time. This is so convenient. Uh, for example, you can uh, press play, make it generate a motif, and immediately listen to that in the synth or whatever of your choice in another host. And then you think, oh, I don't know, it doesn't really suit this sound. You know, I want to find a motif that suits this particular synth sound. Okay, then you just press forward, go into another motif. Absolutely brilliant. Now, let me hear, let me let you hear what it can sound like when we take that MIDI. So here I've got it set up in AUM. Later I'm going to explain how to do all of this stuff. So this is just to let you hear um, what it can sound like. So. So that's an example with some piano with heavy amount of reverb put on, separate reverb on each piano instance. Over here we have a couple of instances of Taluno, and again, different, differently processed. For example, this one I'm sending through Eventide Crystals, this one's going through Eventide Shimmer. So, I mean, you can see, for example, that here, this left inst instance of Toluno and this left instance of Ravenscroft are both playing the same thing. So, of course, you could also send the same lines into multiple synths at the same time and layer, layer things together. This right side of Ravenscroft, right instance. And the right instance of Toluno are also both playing the same thing. Okay, so Let's look at how we set piano motifs up. Actually, let me let you hear what that particular thing sounds like in piano motifs itself, that particular motif. So I'm going in here, I'm disabling MIDI out, and then I press play. Okay, now, uh, did I say this at the beginning or not? I can't remember. Fernando has offered 
three copies of piano motifs um, for subscribers plus three copies of the in-app purchase that you need to actually use the MIDI out in piano motifs. So for details of how to win, look at the top of the YouTube comments section. Look at the comment which I have pinned at the top of all the comments. See the details in there of what you need to do to win. All right, good. Thank you again, Fernando, for sharing that. Now, um, so you can see that that sounds very nice, sure, but if we could only get piano motifs to produce audio like that, uh, it would be quite limited really how we could use it. Um, by sending it out into AUM, I can send it to a really high quality piano, for example, like Ravenscroft, or I can send it to all different kinds of synths. And then, of course, I can apply all kinds of different effects, including, of course, MIDI effects. Um, so it's really, really useful to have this MIDI out. Okay, so let's take a quick look here. I won't go through everything in as much detail as I did in my last tutorial, so go back and watch that first Piano Motifs video if you haven't seen it yet. Let's first look at the MIDI out. So that's this at the top left. All right. So first thing we can disable or enable MIDI. I'm going to enable it again. Here we can set how many loops it's going to play of the motif that it's generating. And I've set it to infinite. We're just going to keep looping it. Here we can set a play delay. That means that if I set, for example, 30 here, see I set 30 here, and I go back out here and I press play, it's actually not going to start sending the MIDI out until 30 seconds have passed. So I'm just going to set it to zero for now. Here we set our MIDI destinations. So if you have apps open that are able to receive MIDI, they will appear in this list. For example, I have iFretless Brass opened, you know, that can receive MIDI. So it's appearing in this list. If AUM was not open, it wouldn't appear in the list. So if you want to send the MIDI to another app, you need to have that other app open already. So here I have it set to send the melody on channel one into AUM, <coughs> excuse me, and the accompaniment on channel two into AUM. We'll talk more about that later. Now here we have things like a save button. So if we generate a motif that we like, we can just save it. Um, here's where we press play. Here, if we don't like this motif, we can generate a new one. Let me just go in and let you hear what a new one sounds like. Okay, maybe you say, eh, not bad, but I'm not crazy about it. You go back in, press next, press play. Now we've got a new one. So like this, you can basically just keep going through until you find something you like. Find something you like, press save. That easy. That one was pretty nice, actually. I should have saved it. <laughs> okay, um, so now I want to load up the one I was using before. So I click on library. It'll open up things I've saved. By the way, I have also in the past often uh, ended up just saving my video in audio share, which is what I would usually use to load it into other apps. So um, yeah, so audio share also a very useful app. Okay. All right, so that's loaded up again. When we press new, there will be a section called settings, and that's where you can set things like 
the scale and time signature, the key. You can set the minimum and maximum octave. I won't talk too much about this. I talked about it in the last video. Also talked about this extended BPM and so on and so on. I think what's new here, for example, is that there wasn't a swing rhythm in the version I reviewed before. And you didn't have these buttons for buying or restoring your in-app purchase. Okay. So let me go back again to the library. So now I'll talk about how to set things up in a host, like here, for example, in the AUM. So I let's say I load up an instance of Ravenscroft, and here I've loaded up two now. Why? Because I wanted to put delay on them, and I wanted to put different timed delays. This is um, triplet quarter notes. And here, eighth triplets, right? Um, but of course, you could just send both channels into the same instrument, right? You don't need to open up two different instruments. Depends what you want to do. Okay, but let's say I want this one to take the channel one MIDI. I want this one to take the channel two MIDI. How do I set that up? Okay, first of all, I click here on this hamburger on the left of the icon for the app. I choose AUM destination because that's where I have told piano motifs to send the MIDI. And when you do this, by default, this channel filter will look like this. All of the 16 channels are white, and that means that all of them, all these channels are, of MIDI are being sent in to this. So if there's any MIDI in any of those channels, it'll receive it. So because we only want it to play channel one, what I'm going to do is press here, none. And then I'm going to press one. And that means now this is only taking the MIDI data from channel one. And so here I have set it up again. We click AUM destination. Always remember that. And you can see here, of course, that that's also got MIDI right, that we see this fl flesh and nothing else is doing that. And here, two is set up. So, um, I mean, here I've added some gain because Ravenscroft tends to be very quiet. But another thing we could do is use something like reamp to sort of get a bit more of a lo-fi kind of sound. Let's see what that would be like. kind of bit warmer sounding, a little bit of grit in it. Let's look at the way these delays are set up. So this is TFX Echo, really, really simple, but very, very nice. Very clean, really transparent delay with really nice modulation and stuff. So I mean here we could play around with the feedback and mix amount and the LFOs, all kinds of stuff.
we could, for example, put everything through something like real bus, get more, even more lo-fi sound. I've also added some more delays on here. That little glitch is impossible to avoid sometimes when you bypass and then add an effect again. So I mean you basically you know could set up a really nice background to jam over here experiment a lot with tons of different effects really nice let's see um, what's going on over here so here we have the shimmer which as I mentioned I reviewed the other day check that video out if you haven't Sometimes it's fun with these things to go in and use something like perforator to create different gating effects, to get different rhythmic textures and stuff. That's another interesting thing to experiment with. Okay, over on this one. But the most interesting thing is that I've added this eventide crystals. So that's a reverse pitch shifted delay. There we go. Really um, such a useful app because the melodies it generates are so musical. Um, I, I find this app just so good. So don't forget everybody, uh, you know what every YouTuber tells you. If you found this video useful, please subscribe for more. Comment if you have any comments or questions and definitely give it a thumbs up. It helps the YouTube algorithms. All right then, everyone. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.